Hey y'all, Billy and Michelle and her little Forest. Yeah. What? Forest is his name. Okay. Because he runs everywhere. William named him Forrest yesterday. Okay, this I did not know because up until now, he didn't have a name, did you, little guy? Anyway, he's doing really, really good. Uh, just got off the, vet with do the phone with the vet, Dr. Stewart. And hang loose, we're going to have some interviews for all you folks out there wanting to raise sheep here in a couple of days. Extraordinary guy. Unbelievable. But before we get into that, y'all, remember, we got that butchery class coming up at the end of April. And then also into May, we're going to be skinning... A, a pig and also um, we're going to be scalding one and the whole reason for all of that y'all is to give you a full breadth of everything all right so let's get right into it we're doing one of the things I love to do most and that is plant trees we're going to show you the right way to do it and let me just first put out a little caveat that our ideal time our number one best time to plant trees is always going to be in the fall because it's gonna, that's when it's putting down its roots. That's when it's gonna stay put. That's when it's gonna do all of the wonderful things. But here in the United States of Amnesia, everybody puts out their trees in the spring. This is gonna be one that's very, very helpful to everybody. So let's, we're first of all, alongside the driveway, and that's strategically done that way, all up and down here on both sides, flanking the driveway that needs a little work right now, are basically fruit trees, berries, edible things, medicinal things, all alongside this driveway. And this is where we get back in the zones. So it makes it easier to do the work we have to do, maintenance and otherwise, and it also makes it easier to harvest and do everything we need to do. So think about your placement right off. Now, we did have a fruit tree in here before, okay? The thing is, it died. And I, I gotta be honest with you, with this ground as heavily sprayed as it was and as compacted as it was, I'm surprised that we have the 90%, 95% success rate with the things we've planted as well as we, as much as we've had. So that's been extraordinary. Part of it being is that we prepped the ground ahead of time with a bunch of cardboard like you see here and a bunch of wood chips. That cardboard is basically a calling card and a lot of manure down there too. That's basically been a calling card for all of the worms down below here. And in fact, I didn't plant it this way. Here's one right here at the surface, right there. So we got tons of worms. As I pull this away, there's almost certainly no cardboard there. So we'll just send him on his way. And a little forest here is, I guess, helping out. Let's talk about our trees. Okay, so ideally, do not be impressed. In the words of the great Stefan Subkoviak, one of my idols in this space, do not be overly impressed with trees that are big, um, that are in these giant pots, and then also they're charging a fortune for this here has a price tag, and it's a brown turkey fig, has a price tag of $8.50, but I think William play, paid considerably less for it. Uh, there was a place in town that basically had a sale. So this one, even though it's much, much smaller, it's a bare root, which means it's going to adapt itself much better to your soil and much faster. Also, it's not root bound in a pot. So these are what we go for. Everything you see around us just about started as a bare root. This here is a pink lemonade blueberry. Also very inexpensive. And we'll get to this in a minute, but the first thing right in the middle of where little forest is land is going to be the tree. <laughs> so I'm basically gonna take all these wood chips that we put back on top, and I'm gonna take a method made, made known to me by the great Stefan Subkoviak. You're gonna hear that word again. Check out his YouTube, y'all. There's a reason I keep mentioning his name and a number of others. And like I said before, permaculture is like mixed martial arts. We picked the right coach for the task we need to know. And he's one of the one of seven coaches we used in terms of food forests and orchards and stuff like that. So we're using him. There's also Mark Shepard. There's a lot, a whole lot of Mark Shepard, especially over there at the uh, food forest. And uh, we're bringing to bear all the coaches we need for the disciplines we want to know. So at the end of the day, I'm not going to necessarily be an expert, but you better believe I am conversational. So I'm not fluent but I'm pretty doggone conversational and I'm getting better and better every year listening to these wise mentors and coaches. Okay, got basically all of the wood chips off the top. Now this is where my bare root is gonna go. Now you'll see that it's flanked. Why don't you tell them what we got here, Michelle? So we got uh, this one. I don't, it doesn't look like we got any daffodils around this one. We might've run out, but we do have, we had quite a few, quite a, bit extra garlic so 
we just went heavy on the garlic just did a ring around the whole uh, area where the tree is going to be planted now it will have daffodils it's just not that time of year right now they're popping up everywhere but we just don't have any here so also what we got here honey oh strawberries yeah we got them all around here so just like last year y'all we will have a mat of edible ground cover just like we had over there where we got 60 gallons. We quit counting after 60 gallons. All right, so I made a tactical error. I didn't really need to put the wood chips there, but I did it there. I put them there so I didn't have it all over the place. These will eventually go on top. And those were triple ground uh, wood chips that we essentially got in exchange for a little bit of honey. So next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna dig my hole and I'm gonna take the dirt out of here. And in accordance with Subkoviak, once again, we're gonna put it on top of that cardboard. And the reason why we wanna do that so if you're in a grassy area, it's not lost down in the grass. That's exactly what we don't want. Y'all, all the cardboard, I wanna point this out, that was here just months ago that we stuck on top before we put those wood chips is gone. That's a really good sign that the life in your soil is very active. This was as hard as Thor's hammer down in here and the worms have already done an extraordinary amount of work. So here's that brown turkey fig, and it's gonna be sitting about yay high. Okay, so I got a little bit too much dirt out of here, which Michelle's gonna kinda of hold it there. There's not a whole lot below it, but we're gonna do the best we can. And this is another advantage of using a, a bare root. So I'm just gonna stack a little bit more back in here. Took way too much out of there. And this is another big advantage of being able to use that cardboard. So now, as you can see, if you were in a grassy area, in no way would all of your material be down in the grass. So how cool is that? Okay. So if you have a graft union, you want to make sure that is not below ground. You want to make sure... Um, it's, it's, I wish I had another tree that I could demonstrate it, but we have tons of videos in where we've done that. If you have your graft union below ground, and believe me, ask me how many times I've made that mistake, it's gonna wind up putting all this energy in the rootstock instead of your scion. And we've made colossal mistakes in the past by doing that. So make sure you're not one of the ones that do it. All right, we're to the point now where we're ready for the cardboard. Isn't that right, Forrest? And here he is just jumping all around. First, I'm putting my cardboard within this area right here, okay? I could do it, you've seen me in the past take this thing and cut a little slit in it. I'll demonstrate that real quick, but that's not what I'm gonna do here. So I'm just gonna basically cut a hole in it, or cut a slit down the middle, and then cut a Y, a little method I came up with a while back, and then I'm just gonna make a little curve. And all I'm gonna do is push it down like so, and then the cool thing about this, I don't even wanna get you a little baby there, is that we could, in regular circumstance, stick it around the tree like so. And now, since we're coming downhill this way, I know it's hard for you to realize that or get that understanding. I would put the opening on the downhill side so it doesn't just fly away if, for whatever reason. That's not what we're gonna do today because I'm working in a very narrow area. So all I'm gonna do is cut off cardboard and I'm gonna stick it around here, okay? And the whole reason for the cardboard is basically giving this tree a tactical advantage. I think Milk Boy's getting a little too rambunctious back there with the little sheepy. All right, so if you gotta do your cardboard this way, it's basically put some here, 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 and then I overlap the preceding one. It's okay if you go very thick on this. And because we are in a temperate rainforest, I'm not so worried about wetting this cardboard. If you're any other place, um, you wanna make sure this is wet before you do this. So it's not wicking the moisture out of the ground into the cardboard. It's just another added um, precaution. Okay, now that we're done here, only thing I gotta do, all those wood chips that I initially pulled off and I put off to the side, that's what's going down. Now, if you do have compost, which is fine, you can go ahead and stick that right in there. Figs do exceedingly well here, so I'm not so worried about it. So I'm gonna save my compost for other things that I know will probably, do, will probably need it. So all I'm gonna do is take my wood chips, stick them right back on top. These are triple ground aged wood chips that we traded honey for. So this is why we don't sell our honey, y'all. This is why we use it for bartering because we get more value out of that than we ever would 
by selling it. Okay, so I don't have enough here, which is fine. So I have some other wood chips that I'm gonna add to it. So I'm gonna get this mulch ring a little bit higher around here. All right, so basically our mulch ring, do not just pile it up against this tree, folks. Please don't do that. You want it looking like a donut on its side. So it's gonna be, we're gonna clear it here at the base a little bit. It's gonna come out, it's gonna come out and do one of these numbers. Typically we would have a much, much wider mulch ring, but I'm not so concerned about it right now. Now this mulch here, we basically got out of the woods <laughs> in, in one of our honey holes where we go to get this stuff. Okay, so we'll put just a little bit more and then we'll talk about what happens next. In a typical orchard, this is as far as you would go. You wouldn't do anything else. You just plant your tree, walk away, and then put the next one maybe five feet away. But this is a permaculture orchard. So once again, Michelle, why don't you come over here and tell them real quick what else is gonna be added to this? Because around every tree, we put rosemary, thyme. thyme. Uh, comfrey, we've got some comfrey crowns that we're gonna plant. We'll probably do about four around the tree. Uh, daffodils, garlic, the garlic's already here. But let's we talk need... about spacing right quick. Let's talk about how that's gonna be within the spacing. So within this mulch ring, especially if you have a vole problem, you wanna make sure you put the daffodils in there because they find them repulsive. So we put like, we treat it like the President of the United States. Okay, that's loaded, but we treat it like a, a, a President of the United States where they have rings of security around it. So we'll have an inner ring of daffodils and then in a perfect world, we'll put an outer ring of daffodils. Not only because the voles find it repulsive, but also the sheep, or not the sheep, but the uh, deer, deer, they're gonna find them repulsive as well. In addition to that, we sell bone sauce. Make no bones about that, forgive the pun. We will come out here with a paintbrush and paint every single tree with bone sauce. We have found, and this isn't scientific yet, but we have found that even in all of our trees that we put bone sauce on, no problem with voles. I'm not prepared to make that as a scientific statement yet, but we have noticed that. All the ones that didn't, and they were typically nitrogen fixers over here in a food forest area, um, those had vole issues. So is there a correlation there? We don't completely know yet, but we're gonna plant, we're gonna paint everything with bone sauce, and it seems to help in that regard as well. In the future, we're gonna do, so we don't put too much in here and just confuse everybody. We're gonna talk about the placement of the things within the guild at another video. That's gonna be another video entirely because if we do all that um, to a great extent, it's gonna just kind of water down what the real intent of this video is, which is how to put these trees in the ground right now if you're doing it in the spring. Ain't that right, Forrest? Okay, so like we talked about the garlic, the only thing we're gonna add right now is the comfrey. Now, that's the only thing I'm gonna talk about in terms of spacing. Honey, would you hand me that shovel, please? Okay. So we use our shovel as a barometer, as a gauge really, for a number of things out here. We've talked about this in the past and I think that was done on Patreon. We'll do it for everybody else here before long. But at certain lengths, away from that tree, we're gonna plant different things. Like I said in the later video, we'll talk about what that is. Like right here, we have a um, raspberry that's from last year. So on each side, flanked on opposite side is gonna be a, a certain bush. Flanked on the other side is gonna be another bush and it may be a nitrogen fixer. But over here, about that same length away as the, as the uh, raspberry, we're gonna do the same exact thing with a blueberry. So here it is, right about here, I'm gonna go ahead and put in a blueberry. So we'll just go ahead and do that too. That's tape that was on the cardboard that used to be here. You want to try to get that off beforehand. Sometimes it slips by us, but I promise you, if you don't get it off, you're going to find tape. The worms will move this stuff around. You're going to find plastic all over the place. So absolutely, positively, it seems like a pain, but you're going to be, you're going to be glad you took the time to get that tape off. Just look at him.
Okay, so we got a blueberry in, about a shovel's distance, once again, away from there. This is all gonna make sense in the future, y'all. So we're gonna cover this in greater detail. And then once again, I'm gonna cut my little Y in there. Cut that out. And then we're gonna, the downhill is that way. So I'm gonna put it in here like so. And then bam. Actually, it's more like that way, so we'll just go ahead and do that. Um, once again, if you had any amendments, you want to put it on top. And the reason why is because that's how nature does it. So we're just going to go ahead. You don't want to mix anything into the hole. That was another thing we learned from Mr. Subkoviak, is that when you go doing all that stuff, first of all, it doesn't mimic nature at all. And we found out that we do have better success when we put all the fertility on top and let the worms make the exchange. All right, so here we are. Got a raspberry over there. Got a blueberry over here. And there's been this debate about, you know, blueberries loving acid and, you know, in a typical sense they do. But one thing we learned from the great Paul Gauchi is that with this wood chip method, we're finding out, especially over there, as things become more vegetative, we'll explain that with some of these methods, we're finding out that the rules don't necessarily apply all the time. And we got the goods over here to prove it. So this acid lover, along next to the things that may not love acid so much, has historically done pretty well around here. All right, so we're going to walk on over here to the food forest area. And there's food. I'm literally stepping on what's going to be food. Um, so we, yeah, we're, we got a little bit of a vole problem out here, so we're going to have to deal with that. Also got a milk boy problem because he's been digging after him. So that's going to get dealt with too. All right, so this is where the star of the show is right now. Right now we're replacing some of the trees that weren't here. Now, this is an area where we needed a nitrogen fixer. This one here is a red bud. So we have red bud, we have a little bit of mimosa, we have some false indigo, we got black locust. So we've talked a lot about black locust because it's been given such a black eye in the public and it has tons of awesome uses. Well, right here, this red bud's gonna add a little bit of you know variety out here in this food forest. Right now it doesn't look like much y'all, but hold on, when spring kicks in, you're gonna see it blowing up like it did last year and even to a higher degree. So, here's a little red bud, but this is also an indication of the kind of bare roots we plant out here because you get all those micro roots and it's all gonna be a benefit. It's gonna have a higher survivability and it's gonna better adapt to your place. So once again, don't be impressed with those big trees. This is what we have here. We're not gonna do much more than put this around there and dump, oh shoot, this thing is heavy. We're gonna give it a mulch ring. Got a little closer than I would have preferred. We're gonna give it a mulch ring. And really not much else. And then this is where we go into Mark Shepherd territory with pretty much all of our trees. This is about as far as we go. We provide mulch, uh, spray milk on them every, month or so there's a reason for that we'll talk about that later and uh, really if it's on its own if it if it needs a whole lot of intervention here just like we talked about with the sheep and the other things if they require a constant babysitting a constant input then you don't want it because all of a sudden you go from having a orchard to something you got to babysit all the time this is about all it will get I will add mulch and that's it that is a wrap on this one so just like everything else it's either gonna make it or it ain't. And thank God, we've had a high degree of success down here so far. So we'll keep thanking the Lord. And then also one thing I always do, y'all, this may put some of you out, but it, it always means something to me. I will pray over this. Sound radical? Yeah, I will pray over every single thing I put in. When I remember, yeah, foolishly I don't, but honestly, it makes all the difference in the world. I pray over everything we put in. So keep that component there in mind as well. And um, that's pretty much going to do it for us, y'all. I want to thank you so much for checking us out. Like I said, we got that butchery coming up. Check us out on the Permaculture Pimpcast, the ball in this podcast out there. You want to make sure you check it out. We got that over there. Make sure you check it out and give us a five-star rating. Got comfrey in stock, bone sauce, all those things. Till next time, this is Billy from Perma Pastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. We'll see y'all next time.